It costs on average $2,000 for you guys to go camping with your four-wheel drive per day. How do we come to that conclusion? Watch and find out. 80% of people, in other words, most people out there, only use their four-wheel drive 20 times in a year. That's camping. And what's even more interesting, 50% of people use their vehicle for camping less than 10 times a year. That is very interesting, considering the fact that we all long to have the ultimate four-wheel drive. And the ultimate four-wheel drive concept is different for every person, but one thing that does remain the same, we are all sold the dream of four-wheel driving, which also comes with the idea that we need absolutely everything. Bigger tires, bigger lift, all the 12-volt gadgets that you can think of. And on top of that, we all have change in life situations, such as camping habits, travel tastes, the vehicle that we have built, which is the ultimate full drive, no longer suits our requirements, no longer fits the bill, no longer does it for us. Excuse me, love. Oh. I've got some great news. I'm pregnant. So... Great? With twins. Great? Oh, and by the way, we need to sell the four wheel drive and get a minivan. The question is, will the ultimate four-wheel drive that you have built, will it suit you in a year's time or two years time? What about five years time? What about 10 years time? Most of us don't think about the future. We're all stuck in the now. We all want what that person has because it seems convenient. It seems awesome. So it must be required. And all of a sudden we have a distorted version of our ultimate four-wheel drive. Our concept has just gone wayward. It's cost us a lot of money. With the research we have done, the average four-wheel drive that has mods spent on it is somewhere under $20,000. So all this makes sense, we've done a poll. 10,000 people voted in, and these are the results of people who are spending money on their vehicle. 74% spend up to $20,000 on their vehicle. So keep that figure in mind, $20,000, that's what we're using. But here comes the other graph, which is quite staggering as well. 79% of people, that's the two top bars combined, they only use the vehicle up to 20 days a year. That's it. What's even more staggering is the fact that zero to 10 days of use is 54% of people. We're taking the 54% of people, the 10 days with the $20,000 mod allowance, and that's what we're basing the following on. So let's work on 20 grand, which includes bar work, tires, lift, fridge, compressor, roof rack, storage boxes, UHF radio, awning. And if you get all that for under $20,000, you've done very well. Because this doesn't even include lights, winch, the cover gear, drawers, the canopy, internal fit out, dual battery, max track, GPS, camping lights. Use that vehicle for 10 days in a year. Every time you go camping, it's costing you two thousand dollars and that doesn't include food and water and also fuel that goes on top two thousand dollars per time you camp that's what most people do that we have surveyed imagine if you spent a hundred thousand dollars which is not actually uncommon. I've spent over $100,000 on my 79 series. Don't act so surprised. Spending $100,000 on a vehicle and using it for 10 days, $10,000 every time you go camping. That's what that costs. Not including fuel and food and all the other stuff you would buy for a camping trip. Let's say use it for 20 days. It's still costing you $5,000 per camp. 40 days, two and a half grand. That is what a $100,000 modification build costs on a car every time you go camping. So make sure you bloody use the car. Okay, okay, let's factor in the fact that most people keep a vehicle for five years and then move it on. So you would get your money back, right? No, you wouldn't because the mods you put into your vehicle, unless it's during COVID, you're not going to make money back on anything. So it's money you've spent. Even if you keep the vehicle for five years, you are still changing things as you go, maintaining things, fixing things, removing things, replacing things. There is more money being spent on that vehicle, which you need to factor in. And hopefully over those five years, you've at least used the vehicle 10 times a year, right? Okay, shut the f*** up, Ronnie. What about people that go overseas and spend five to $25,000 and all they bring back are cool memories. Let's be honest, they'll probably be pretty good memories, right? But they're not bringing back a full drive that they can use, say next week and head out again for a shorter trip or something. Use the full drive again next year. 
they're not bringing that back. All they're bringing back is memories. Let's not lose sight of the four wheel drive camping culture. I mean, we all willingly spend the money on the vehicle. It's a lifestyle, it's a life choice. We choose to do it. However, we need to understand and find a balance between the ultimate four wheel drive rig setup and just getting out there with what we need. Wants and needs are two very different things. We all head out to the bush to be more primitive, right? Light a fire, sit under the stars, hang out with friends, and just have a good time being closer to nature. We don't need to bring all our home comforts with us. We'll get those when we finish our trip and go home. So why the coffee machines? Why do you 2000 watt inverters, TV screens, induction cookers, $40,000 canopies fully kitted out? bigger tires, bigger lift, all the 12 volt gadgets, all this stuff for people who only use their vehicle for 10 days a year or 20 days a year. My intention is not to scare you or make you feel bad about all the money you spent in your vehicle. I just want to bring your attention and make you aware of where the money is going into your vehicle. Is it really something you're going to use in future? I think that's the biggest question. I am the poster boy of doing all that I'm not gonna sit here and try and hide behind the fact that I haven't done any of these things because I've done all of them. But I do think my past self will be proud of how I'm thinking about things today, how I'm doing things today. And it's only come about from all the experience and all the heavy blows or the heavy knocks to my wallet, learning the hard way. What this video is all about is so you don't have to learn the hard way like I did learn from this video. The following is a blueprint that's going to work for absolutely everyone who's watching this video. It's gonna work for everyone. Whether you save a little bit or quite a bit, it's gonna work for you either way. Before we get into this blueprint, just take the time now to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button because you are about to save a lot of money, people. And if you wanna help me out a bit, well, you can check out that join button where the members are and you can find out what that is all about. But let's get to the blueprint right now. Think of camping as going out to the bush to be more primitive. Coffee machine, f that billy can all the way, man. How long are you keeping the current vehicle for that you are building right now? Do you have like a five year plan that you wanna get, for example, a Nissan Patrol Y62 or a 79 series or a 200 series or a 300 series, but right now you've got like an older Hilux or something like that. That being the case, maybe don't spend too much money on that vehicle right now because your future plans are moving to something bigger and better, right? But what you can do, you can have adaptable mods. If you have awning, say even like a, like a canopy on it, you could theoretically take those things off and put on the next vehicle, providing that vehicle can accommodate for those modifications as well. Because when you add modifications to a vehicle and you go to sell it, it's not actually adding value to your vehicle. What it does do, it makes it easier to sell. If you put two of the same vehicles up against each other for the same price, if one has an awning and a roof rack, well, people are more inclined to go towards that because they're getting more out of their money, but you can't ask for more just because you got a couple of things on your vehicle. Bull bar versus a non bull bar car means cool when it comes to selling it. And if you put gear in your vehicle, it will devalue it for sure. Can you justify your build to camp ratio? Your cost to camp ratio, the one we spoke about at the start. Like for example, the $20,000 on a vehicle you're using for say 20 days in a year, that's essentially costing you $1,000 per time you go camping. Don't let that put yourself off, but it's a good ratio to work with. For example, the $100,000 car is 10 times as much, right? If you're only using it 10 times a year. It's a good ratio to work towards. It makes you more aware. Hopefully it doesn't make you feel too bad about what you're doing, but it'll make you feel more aware of the money you're spending on your vehicle. And I spent 100 grand on my car. And may I suggest don't show your partner those figures because then it's gonna go really bad for you. The next modification you are considering to purchase for your vehicle, ask yourself these following questions. How often will you use it? For example, a 2000 watt inverter. How often are you going to use that? Is it just to make coffees? Just to run an induction cooker? Maybe consider the fact that you are spending an extra $2,000 on that and then you're spending uh, you need more battery bank to run it and then because you're using like power now you need solar. There's a lot of stuff that you need just to do some simple things. So maybe just get a gas cooker. You can do coffee and food on a gas cooker rather than running an induction cooker and a coffee machine. Can I get by without it? With an awning, most people's answer is going to be no, can't go without it. But what about bigger tires? Can most people go without that? Yes, 100%. Most people can go without having bigger tires. If anything, it can actually make things worse for them. And that brings us to the next one. 
will it hinder what I'm trying to do or will it hinder other modifications? If you put bigger tires in your vehicle, depending on to what size you go, you are going to incur more fuel usage on your vehicle, your rolling resistance is gonna be higher, moving down a hill is gonna roll faster now because you increase the diameter of the tire, you're changing the behavior of the vehicle. You may not be able to get to fifth or sixth gear where you would normally get to it. Your highway speeds might be a little bit better, could also be worse. There's a few things you need to consider. Maybe the question isn't, do I need bigger tires? It's how big can I go before it starts hindering my vehicle? That's probably the question you should ask yourself if you're looking at bigger tires. Will this modification last five years or will it last 10 years? Another thing to ask yourself, and this is where you can check yourself from buying inferior crap or real quality stuff. But then, if you're spending money on the real high-end gear, make sure you keep the vehicle for a long time. Because having quality stuff is all good and well, but if you're not holding on to the quality stuff, all you're doing is you are providing the next buyer of that vehicle all the benefit of using quality gear. Get what I'm saying? It will seem obvious to some, but if you are one of those people who are going to pull the seats out of your vehicle, you know, generally done in a wagon, but sometimes in utes as well, to have more of a platform in the back to store more things, hold on to those seats. Two reasons. Number one, when you go to sell that vehicle, at least you have the seats and you can sell the vehicle a lot easier. Number two, you may end up having kids. What, you think that's out of the question? Okay, well, 50% of you people watching right now under the age of 40 are going to have kids. Or you may already have kids and you just don't know about it. What? If you're not sure wherever to get a ute or a wagon or a solid axle or an IFS vehicle, there's a bit of a red flag there. It means that you're not really sure on what you want to do with the vehicle in the first place, what you want to set it up for. And you need to learn a bit more about yourself and four-wheel driving and understand exactly what it is you're trying to achieve and what it is you're trying to do. Because not knowing exactly what you want to do, how are you going to make the right choice on a canopy fit out? How are you going to make the right choice on suspension and tires? It's all different for what you want to use the vehicle for. Don't want to leave you completely high and dry on the whole ute versus wagon thing. I'm going to give you one tip right here. If you have a budget, go for a wagon. Why? Because setting up a wagon in the back, you can do between $1,000 to $10,000. You've got a wicked setup in the back of your wagon. If you do this on a ute, however, you're going to need a canopy to achieve the same kind of thing, unless you like all your stuff out in the dirt. If you're doing a canopy, you're looking anywhere from $10,000 to about $40,000 completely set out. Is a troopy a wagon? Nah, it's a bus. Nah, it's a troopy. Looking at buying a camper trailer, 25, 50 grand maybe, or a caravan, 50 grand and above, maybe up to $150,000, that is a huge investment. And if you're not even sure if you really like towing it or staying in a caravan or staying in a camper trailer or just the lifestyle itself, it's a bit risky just going straight into it. So what I would suggest is try before you buy. Camplify, that's probably one of the best places to go because you can choose anything you want, take it out and you're only spending a couple of grand maybe for a couple of weeks. I'm not really sure on the pricing, but instead of spending $150,000 in a caravan that you may hate towing around or your family doesn't like going in it or you realize you're only going to use this caravan 10 times a year that's hundred and fifty thousand dollars for 10 times a year let's divide that that's fifteen thousand dollars per camp imagine if your partner thought about it that way the hotel room you could get for fifteen thousand dollars a night man imagine we could get in vegas for that if you're planning to travel around Australia, you know, maybe rent the house out or sell the house and buy a caravan and go around Australia for a couple of months, maybe a year, maybe two years, sure, that's where you would definitely just go and get something, but try before you buy. Just hire something out, make sure it's what you actually want to live in, then go for it. It's not having the trailer, it's storing the trailer. Canopy setups, go modular, try removable stuff. If you have a canopy you've already spent all that money on, maybe 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, depends on the canopy that you've got yourself. A canopy is not something you wanna just keep chopping and changing. However, the inside of it, you can chop and change and it's gonna feel like a brand new canopy or the way you set it up the first time is not the way you're gonna want it in five years time, I can tell you that much. So what I suggest here is do a modular fit out, something that you can remove or you can remove this portion and put another thing in. That is probably the best way to go about that. And the same thing goes for drawers in the back of wagons. Don't permanently fix it down. Get systems you can actually adapt, change, 
If you can do that, it might cost you a little bit more now, but later in future, it's adaptable, it's changeable. For example, if you maybe do it so you can pull half of it out, keep the other half in, you may all of a sudden have a bloody baby on board and then now you need to have a stroller in the back. So there are ways of lessening the impact of life changes moving forward rather than having to change the whole thing or worst case, we need, we need to, to sell, sell a four wheel drive and get a minivan. Building a troopy, believe it or not, even a troopy you can do modular. Most people or two people ultimate tourists that build a troopy, what they'll do is they'll do a kitchen in one stretch and on the other side they'll do something else that's in one piece. Try and think of doing it modular instead. If your kitchen is in two to three pieces, but it still functions, part of it still functions without the other part, you're onto something good. And here's why. A lot of troopy owners out there are in their 20s, 30s or something like that. They may have kids later on. And if they have kids later on, they can pull out part of that module system and then put a seat in its place instead. And even if they don't want to put a seat in that place later, they can change it to something else. It's adaptable. It changes to their life situations or their camping habits. Everything changes as time goes. If you build a troopy right now, I guarantee you it's not going to look the same in five years' time. Definitely not in 10 years' time if you still have it. Modular and detachable and removable and replaceable, you are going to be so much happier and you're going to be able to do so much more with it. Your investment is going to last longer. It's not going to be a one-stop shop done thing that now you need to sell the whole thing and redo it from scratch because that's expensive. If you'd like more advice on modifying your four-wheel drive, well, I've actually done a whole podcast on it over at Backchat Studios. Check that out at the end of this video. Every single episode we've done so far over there is down in the description below as well. Don't get caught up too much in the pursuit of the ultimate four-wheel drive because the ultimate four-wheel drive is a moving target. It's a reflection of your needs and desires that are constantly evolving, but hopefully it's more for your needs rather than wants. Plan for the future, build wisely, and above all, keep the adventure alive. And if you own a troopy, keep the troopy dream alive. Support us down below by buying something at the shop. It goes a long way. Cheers, guys. See you next time. You're still here. Good on you. You made it this far. I can't believe it. Hit that subscribe button. You've earned it. We're going to turn the lights off, man. You might as well go. Go to the next video.